Hello, today I want to talk about noticing. I want to talk about attention. I want to talk about the way in which paying more attention to the world around us can help us to be a better, more well-rounded, more interesting, more engaged person. I want to start with a quote from probably my favourite philosopher of all time, uh, Gillian Rose. She says, to be a philosopher, you need only three things. First, infinite intellectual eros, endless curiosity about everything. Second, the ability to pay attention, to be wrapped by what is in front of you without seizing it yourself, the care of concentration. In the way you might look closely without touching at the green lacewing fly overwintering silently on the kitchen wall. And third, acceptance of pathlessness, aporia, that there may be no solutions to queries, only the clarifications of their statements. Eros, attention, and aporia. And it's the second point, and also some of the first point that I want to focus on today, that the ability to pay attention to the world around us, to observe it without necessarily being a participant in it, is something that can really benefit the human experience and it's something that when we're constantly surrounded by different sources of distraction and entertainment it's a skill that we don't really practice enough anymore and it's a skill that I've been trying more intentionally to practice over the last few months although it's something that I've been interested in for the whole of my adult life. Jonathan Meads is another great love of mine he is a documentary filmmaker He makes films that are full of uh, love of the ordinary and the everyday. They're comical, they're wonderful, they're a great expression of uh, this generalist interest in the world. And he said in an interview years ago, um, and I made a note of it because it was so important, and when I was doing my postgraduate study, I actually had this on a, um, a postcard right in front of my desk uh, for a few years. The banal is a thing of joy. Everything is fantastical if you stare at it long enough. And I do think that's true, but I don't think it's something that comes about naturally. I don't think we can just go out into the world and expect it to present itself as something that's fascinating. We have to do some work as well. We have to teach ourselves what it is about the world that's interesting. And when we are going out and we are deliberately noticing things, we need to look for the patterns. We need to learn about how things work because there's very little in the world that is disconnected. There's very little in the world that happens genuinely randomly. When we are looking at something, when we're observing the world around us, what we're really looking for are patterns. It might be the tides, it might be seasons or history or architecture, it might be knowing about urban development, it might be knowing about the types of soil that trees grow in, it could be all of these things. And when we know about these kind of, I guess, esoteric bits of knowledge, we start to notice more uh, of them in the world around us. It's a self-fulfilling prophecy. Bertrand Russell talks about useless knowledge, knowledge that doesn't necessarily seem to serve a utilitarian purpose. Knowing about these things is not going to earn us more money or make us more economically active. But he says it makes life richer, and I agree with him. He gives the example of eating an apricot, and this apricot is sweet, but knowing about the history of apricots, their cultivation, their place in culture, knowing about the etymology of the word apricot, it makes the experience sweeter and better for him it makes life richer and it gives us a better place and really this is an argument for being a generalist something i strongly believe in Um, being a generalist means that you don't necessarily focus all of your time and attention in one or two specific academic areas instead you try and learn as much as possible about a whole range of things You never get to become a true expert in anything, but you do get to experience the world as a more interesting place. So take the example of walking around London yesterday. I knew I was making this video, so I thought I'd shoot some scenes of what I was observing. Now, I know a little bit about architecture, so I was looking at the different architectural styles and use of decoration on some of these buildings. I knew that, for example, the market that I was walking past was being converted into the new Museum of London, so I knew that I wouldn't see it in this state for much longer, and I could see the transition from one place to another and see some of the bits of uh, the history and the different uses of the building peeking through in a way I might not be able to see in a few years' time. 
I was noticing the sky, noticing the fact that the weather had changed from earlier in the day and it was to change later in the day as well. It had gone from cloud and mist and fog uh, to nice blue skies. I was noticing the different patterns on the pavement. I was noticing the trees you know, were still just at the end of summer now and they're starting ever so slightly to show signs of uh, becoming autumn. It was really enjoyable to walk uh, to go and meet my friend because... Um, I wasn't staring at my phone, although I suppose <laughs> I was making these videos, so on this occasion I was, but uh, I was enjoying the, the the layout of the Barbican as I walked through it, the different plants and flowers, and I was enjoying observing people as well. I was enjoying watching um, how people interacted with the space around them, um, listening to different snippets of conversation and, and thinking about what was being said. And so all of this brings me to a practical question because what I'd like to do with these videos is yes, discuss a little bit about what interests me and what I find important, but I also want to share some practical tips or, or ways that you could actually implement some of these things in your life and see whether it improves your life in the same way that it's improved my life. Diana Athill, who is, was a literary critic, she's um, an incredible essayist who writes about her really really interesting life and she wrote this uh, in her advanced age I think she was in her 90s when she wrote this and I find it a really reassuring um, statement that she makes here she says looking at things is never time wasted if your children want to stand and stare let them when I was marvelling at the beauty of a painting or enjoying a great view it did not occur to me that the experience however intense would be of value many years later but there it has remained tucked away in hidden bits of my mind and now it comes shouldering aside even the most passionate love affairs and I love that idea I love the idea that that we might just happen upon something that sticks in our brain and I can already think of things that I saw in the past uh, things that I observed that are just as important to me as some of the moments of high emotion in my life so thinking about some deliberate acts of attention um i think number one for me is something i've been practicing a lot lately and that's no photos just words so it's really easy for us to take photos now i have almost a hundred thousand photos that i've taken over the last maybe 10 to 15 years and uh, you know photos are great i really enjoy taking photos but they take one second and no thought it's not as if we're wasting film or waiting for them to be developed when we take photos now i do print them out sometimes and i put them into albums and i'm really happy with them but it's quite a mindless process. And the extent to which I'm going back on a regular basis and looking at photos I took in 2014 is pretty minimal. Instead, writing uh, slows us down and makes us stop and observe. You cannot write a poem in two seconds. You cannot write a note about what you're seeing in two seconds. And we do go back to writing, or at least we should go back to writing. Um, we might use it to inform something that we do in the future. I will edit the poems and, and post them on a blog. It's a really good way to think about our creative process, our observational process, and to pose questions to ourselves as well. If we're trying to gain more knowledge of the world around us and we see something that we're not sure about, then if we write it down for ourselves, then we can go back and fill in those gaps later. The second is to just take time to stop where we are and stand. I know that we're not all fortunate enough to live in a global city and you might be thinking to yourself well I'm not going to be able to stop and stare under some great landmark or at some beautiful stunning vista. Well you really don't need to. If you know enough about the world around you you can stop and stare in the middle of a DIY store car park. You can stop and stare on the edge of a service station. You can stop and stare at the end of a suburban railway platform and you will find something. You'll notice a pattern because you're familiar with these places. You've been there before. You can see what the changes are. You can see what the continuity is. You can look at the loss and the growth around you and start to see the world as a place of interconnection rather than just of isolated happenings in which we endure until the next moment we can take our phones out and watch something that's going to give us instant gratification. Doing this will benefit us more in the long term because we are finding a better place for ourselves in the world. We are becoming less reliant on the attention economy and less reliant on people who would like to put things in front of us in exchange for money. There's a um, an old poem 
that um, I actually remember because it was on an advert when I was growing up for, for centre parks. Um, and it's really, really stuck with me through the years. Um, what is this life if full of care? We have no time to stand and stare. No time to stand beneath the boughs and stare as long as sheep or cows. Um... I think that's not true. <laughs> I think we have so much time that we spend ploughing it into um, social media and ploughing it into other um, really time intensive but value poor activities that we probably do have time to stand and stare. We have time to stop on our way to the coffee shop or we, we have time to pull over um, on the, the highway and, and just take some time to sit on you know the railing that runs along there and look out into the middle distance and, and get our notebooks out and, and write about what we see so never let anyone tell you that we have no time to stand and stare because uh, we might not have quite as much time as sheep or cows but we have a fair amount um my third one is about looking up and down this is something that i learned really um quite a long time ago is that especially when you're walking around I sp well i was going to say especially when you're walking around in a city but i think it applies everywhere um looking up is really beneficial noticing the sky to start with uh, learning a bit so you can buy a book called the cloud spotters guide by gavin pretapini that will teach you about all the different clouds and what they mean the architecture is always more noticeable above ground level because it's not being constantly modified by shop fronts or housing and things like that it tends to be left alone up there you might spot birds for example you might look at the way that different buildings interact with each other the way that the canopy of the trees look and then um, something I started doing more recently was was looking down. So looking at the ground beneath us, uh, you can see interesting things there too. I went through a period recently of uh, observing different types of, of pavement and uh, looking at Victorian um, drain covers and, and seeing where quite often in the UK they have the, the town where they were made and the company they were made and, and spotting patterns there. It's quite niche but quite enjoyable. And then I guess my fourth point would be to look for something specific when you go out into the world if you are wanting to develop your knowledge about the world to become more of a generalist then you can kind of go out and spot the things that you're looking for so it might be that you're looking again at architecture it might be that you're looking at trees it might be looking or that you're looking at the different uh, plants that are planted in the fields it might be that you go out trying to observe insects I went through a stage back in the beginning of this year in January and February where my friend Rob and I have been doing these um, orbital walks around London and we're currently doing the London Loop and uh, in January and February, it can be quite bleak. Uh, there's not a lot of greenery around. Um, you're walking through woodland for long stretches of time and you would think there's nothing really there to capture your attention unlike at the moment where you go out in the summer and there's all sorts of things to look at. And so I learned a bit about moss and fungus and lichen and uh, I would go out and, and stop poor Rob on these walks and say, we're going to stop and we're going to look at this slime fungus, we're going to stop and we're going to look at this lichen on the wood, we're going to identify what this moss is. Uh, and it was just another way of becoming more of a generalist, learning more about the world around you. And so that's that. I hope that is of some interest to you. I hope it helps you to see um, sometimes our mundane and banal world as something worthy of your attention. I hope it helps you to develop yourself into a more of a generalist about the world around you. Um, I'd be really interested into what you're looking out for when you pay attention to the world, whether there are certain things that give you joy and pleasure when you go um, and uh, look away from your phone uh, for a while. Please do comment below. I hope you enjoyed and uh, it's always a pleasure speaking to you and I'll speak to you soon.